The arm that holds the plow grows daily stronger, and in growing stronger, becomes yet more the master and owner of the soil. The Jihad against Israel. Islam's Jewish problem reemerges. The rise of Zionism. In 1882, 4,000 young Russian Jews arrived in Palestine, marking the beginning of the movement for Jewish nationalism, Zionism, which envisioned the return of Jews to their ancient homeland and the reestablishment of a Jewish state. At the time, Jews numbered around 25,000, or only 10% of the total population of Palestine. Many immigrants were Jewish students and members of Hovave Zion, lovers of Zion who carried romantic, nationalist, and socialist ideals with them to the land of Zion. However, the young Russian Jews were not religious. Instead, they came to work the land and establish agricultural settlements. The Russian Jews migrated to Zion for the same reasons Theodor Herzl had written his famous book, Der Judenstaat, The Jewish State. Anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic laws in Russia, pogroms, and insecurity in Eastern Europe. In 1897, the first Zionist conference met in Basel, Switzerland, led by Theodor Herzl. Several waves of immigrants followed, bringing the Jewish population in Palestine to 90,000 by 1914. Several thousand Jews also arrived from Yemen, North Africa, and Central Asia. We're pursuing diplomacy to help bring peace to the Holy Land. Palestine and the Balfour Declaration. The Romans had renamed Judea as Palestina when they conquered the area and exiled the Jews. After the Muslim conquests, the name Palestine was not used in the area itself, while Europeans used the term Holy Land. On November 2nd, 1917, the British government in the Balfour Declaration declared that it would facilitate the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. By 1929, the Jewish population in Palestine reached 160,000. By 1936, with Hitler and German anti-Semitism on the rise in Europe, Jews totaled 400,000, around 30% of the population. Misplacement of Western values. Labor Zionist leaders hoped to win Muslim support for a Jewish state, believing economic benefits and education were their goals. The labor Zionists thought local Arabs saw themselves as a deprived economic working class, as they saw themselves. Clearly, the early Zionist pioneers did not understand Islam, the passions of the believers, nor their worldview. Arab opposition to Jewish settlement in Palestine became intense. Small bands of Arabs attacked individual Jews in Jewish settlements, becoming more organized and widespread over time. Major attacks occurred in 1929, including the Hebron Massacre, where 67 Jews were murdered, and the Safed Massacre, where 18 Jews were killed and 200 homes burned and looted. Islam versus Zionism. With the potential of Jewish statehood, the World Islamic Congress convened for the first time in Jerusalem on December 7, 1931. It was attended by 130 Muslim leaders from 22 Muslim countries. Chaired by the Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al-Husseini, they examined the extensive Jewish elements in the Quran, early Islamic history, and Islamic theology. These Muslim thinkers concluded the Islamic position toward a Jewish state should be one of total rejection. Zionism is ipso facto an aggression detrimental to Muslim well-being and that it is directly ousting Muslims from the control of Muslim land and Muslim holy places. The Congress also called for a boycott of the Jews in Palestine. In Islam, historic worldly events on a political level are an affirmation of faith. With Islam's initial statehood in Medina, the fulfillment of religion for Muslims was the dominance of Islam over non-believers. Therefore, a Jewish state was impossible intolerable, dangerous, and totally incompatible with Islam and historic truths. Additionally, Zionists were considered by Muslims to be a tool of Western imperialism, using their most evil ancient enemy, the Jews, 
to penetrate and undermine Islam. The British Royal Commission. In 1936, the British Royal Commission on Palestine was established. Labor Zionist leaders Chaim Weizmann and David Ben-Gurion testified with little conviction for a Jewish state. Weizmann, the future first president of Israel, testified, if there is going to be a Jewish state one day, it will only be when we are worthy of it, and it may take hundreds of years. We realize we cannot have the whole of Palestine. David Ben-Gurion, the future first prime minister of Israel, proclaimed, there are other inhabitants in Palestine, and they have a right not to be at the mercy of the Jews. For the solution of the Jewish problem, it is not necessary that Palestine should constitute a separate state. Also, there are holy places in Palestine which should be placed under a higher supervision. The next to testify was Vladimir Zeev Jabotensky, the creator of the Jewish Legion in World War I, an apostle of militant Zionism. Jabotinsky articulated the Jewish demand for statehood in terms of desperation and the need for immediate salvation for millions of doomed Jews in Europe. We are facing an elemental calamity. Three generations of Jewish thinkers and Zionists have come to the conclusion that the cause of our suffering is the very fact of the diaspora, the fact that we are everywhere a minority. <laughs> We have got to save millions, many millions, who are virtually knocking at the door of Palestine asking for admission. That is for salvation. We cannot concede anything. Yes, we do want a state. That is the normal condition for our people. I have the profoundest feeling for the Arab case. It is quite understandable that the Arabs of Palestine would also prefer Palestine to be the Arab state number four, number five, number six. But when the Arab claim is confronted with our Jewish demand to be saved, it is like the claims of appetite versus the claims of starvation. An American destroyer comes alongside a cruiser in the Suez Canal. King Abd Al Aziz Ibn Saud met with President Roosevelt and British Colonel H.R.P. Dixon, who submitted the King's comments to the Royal Commission on Palestine. Today, we and our subjects are deeply troubled over this Palestine question and the strange hypnotic influence which the Jews, a race accursed by God according to his holy book, and destined to final destruction and eternal damnation, appear to wield over them and the English people. The Quran contains God's own word and divine ordinance, and we commend His Majesty's government to read and carefully peruse that portion which deals with the Jews and especially what is to be their fate in the end. Your government must at once further restrict all further immigration of Jews into Palestine. If I, an ignorant Bedouin Arab of Arabia, can see as clearly as I see the sun rise that the proposed partition of Palestine is wicked and wrong in God's sight, surely the more clever Western politicians, if they fear God at all, can see this also. Therefore, there is no other side to this question except bargaining with Satan. Finally. Haj Amin al-Husseini appeared before the Royal Commission. Lord Peel asked, You want completely to stop Jewish immigration. What do you want to do with the 400,000 Jews there at present? The Mufti answered, Muslim rule has always been known for its tolerance. According to history, Jews had a most quiet and peaceful residence under Arab rule with complete freedom and liberty. As an Islamic leader, Husseini believed that Jewish political independence did not fit into Islamic society, as Islam's natural socio-religious order allowed only for a Muslim-Jewish relationship of protector and tributary. Just as was the case with the Armenian Christians, the Jews' refusal to accept tributary status was grounds for physical termination, not for independence.
the war against the Jews. In 1939, Great Britain acquiesced to the Muslim arguments and issued a white paper limiting Jewish immigration to Palestine to only 10,000 per year for five years. Any additional Jewish immigration was to be made only with Arab consent. With the white paper, Great Britain abandoned the idea of the Balfour Declaration of helping to create a Jewish homeland and cut off one of the few routes of escape for Jews of Europe who were being persecuted and exterminated by the Nazis. Despite the British blockade, the Jews continued with illegal immigration by sea. On November 28, 1941, Haj Amin al-Husseini submitted a draft to Hitler, asking him to declare that Germany and Italy recognize the right of the Arab countries to solve the question of the Jewish elements, as the Jewish question was solved in Germany and Italy. Later in the war, the Mufti went to work for Nazi Germany as a propagandist and a recruiter of Muslim volunteers for the German armed forces, organizing and recruiting Bosnian Muslims into several divisions of the Waffen-SS. In 1944, while speaking on Radio Berlin, Al Husseini said, Arabs rise as one man and fight for your sacred rights. Kill the Jews wherever you find them. This pleases God, history, and religion. God is with you. At the Nuremberg war crimes trials in 1946, Adolf Eichmann's deputy, Dieter Wilensky, testified. The Mufti was one of the initiators of the systematic extermination of European Jewry and had been a collaborator and advisor of Eichmann and Himmler in the execution of this plan. He was one of Eichmann's best friends and had constantly incited him to accelerate the extermination measures. I heard him say, accompanied by Eichmann, he had visited incognito the gas chambers of Auschwitz. The establishment of Israel. In 1947, the Palestine question came before the General Assembly of the United Nations. But the Arabs of Palestine cannot go into any political discussion on the basis of any Jewish state in Palestine. Surely the Jewish people is no less deserving than other peoples. Are the Arabs responsible for that problem? Have they acted or worked or helped in creating such a problem? The Jewish people were your allies in the war and joined their sacrifices to yours to achieve a common victory. The admission of the applicant, if taken, would be the highest consummation of injustice. Dr. Weitzman's first name was C-H-A-I-M. And I didn't know how to pronounce it, so I called him Cham. We had a long, long conversation. And he explained the situation from his viewpoint. And I listened to him very carefully. When we were through, I said, all right, you two Jews have put it over on me, and I'm glad you have. The United States delegation supports the basic principles of the unanimous recommendations and the majority plan which provides for petition and immigration. The New Zealand delegation will, of course, of course, vote for the admission of Israel. Afghanistan, no. Argentina, abstention. France, yes. The resolution of the Duck Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions. On May 14th, 19.